we shall just wait a few minutes uh, just for people to pour in uh, and we'll just confirm if all the finalists have joined. All right. Uh, while we wait for the everyone to join in, I think we can just start off with the introductions. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, whoever has joined, well, and congratulations for all the finalists have to make it to the finals. And my name is Nikhil. I am a volunteer at the Product Folks, and I will be predominantly hosting the event. And I have with me from Product Folks, Naman, and of course our panelists from BitClass, Utsav Tiwari. Hi, Utsav. Thank you for coming and joining us and for taking out the time to uh, judge the event. <clears throat> uh, first of all, thank you so much to all the participants for taking out time and PPF for organizing this wonderful event. Thank you so much. Uh, so before we jump into um, to learn more about BitClass and uh, Utsav's journey and Gunjan's journey, I would just like to give a brief about who the product folks are and what we have been doing for anybody who have uh, who aren't the finalists and who have joined from outside and who still don't know about the initiative. So Product Folks is a volunteer-driven community, and we have many initiatives such as Insert Joe, Product Teardown, Women in Product, uh, and we are trying to help people across the uh, career spectrum in any way we can to excel their career uh, through all these initiatives and programs that we have, whether it is uh, whether they are students trying to uh, gain more information regarding the product domain or mid-level to senior level um, product enthusiasts and professionals who are trying to excel in their career. Now, coming to Product Teardown, which is the event that you are all witnessing and a part of, coming to Product Teardown, it is an initiative where we collaborate with a, a different company every month and the company has issue, issues a product state problem statement to help their drive their product in different ways, whether it is customer acquisition or growth or any problem that they are facing. And uh, they, with the certain instructions that you, uh, that the co-founders or the panelists provide, the registrants uh, submit decks with which um, finalists are decided and picked, and there is a prize money involved and the registrants have a chance to interview for the company themselves. Now, uh, that is about the product folks. And before uh, we uh, talk to Utsav about the, his own product journey, I would just like to give a brief uh, introduction regarding uh, Utsav's career and what I may have found just to touch upon his career until now. Uh, unfortunately, you most of you may have seen the poster and you might be aware that Gunjan might have been joining us as well, but he, as far as I believe, is unwell and wasn't able to join us. So Utsav will be uh, leading us with this event. So Utsav is, uh, has expertise in data analytics and data engineering and has wo worked for um, household names such as Mintra, Nestaway, and Trebo before co-founding um, uh, BitClass with Gunjan. And at uh, BitClass, he works as obviously the CTO for the company and has taken uh, the company from of BitClass right from his two-year journey, I believe. They started just at the break of COVID pandemic, which I think was remarkable, but, but which also makes sense considering what BitClass provides to all of us, which is online tutoring in uh, different domains. Utsa, would you like to take it from here? Um, introduce yourself to it in any aspect that I may have missed. Sure. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Nikhil, for the introduction. I think you are fairly on point uh, about BitClass. So yeah, I graduated out of engineering, I think, six years back now. It's been a good six years. And I've been working in tech and product ever since. Uh, started BitClass right at the start of the pandemic. The idea at that time was to build a product for teachers 
but gradually the focus has shifted from teachers to students so for the last one and a half years we are essentially building it as a platform for discovering online courses live online courses live is at the center of it it's essentially a try and buy kind of a setup wherein you can register for n number of free classes before you decide to pursue a longer more involved paid course and uh, thirdly we are cross category we are present across multiple categories which are always expanding and we are building more depth into it typical target audience is people like us people who have graduated or, in, or are in the process of graduating from college till about about 35 to 40 that's the that's the sweet spot that's a sweet range so to, so to say for us all right thank you so much and um, is there anything else that you would like to convey to the finalists before we dive into the event uh, nothing really your submissions were very thoughtful very well laid out i think uh, almost everybody followed a very good template going into user research and then breaking down the problem statement so that was that made my job easier at least to go over it and then mull over it so yeah nothing nothing specific and all the best okay thank you so much itself uh, we wish gunjan could have been here to help um, judge the event uh, but without further ado, I would just like to uh, go over how this the event would work. So I would just be uh, prompting uh, Naman to um, uh, run the pinwheel. So how we choose who goes first is basically luck. He has a, a pinwheel app and a website. And all the, I hope everyone has joined this. All the finalists have joined us. I think one person has told us that he would join a bit late. So we have taken him out of the pinwheel, but the other five finalists will be there. And I hope all of you have been ready. If you see your ne name or your team pop up on the pinwheel, that means that's your cue to uh, begin presenting. Please raise your hand. And uh, Tanya, who is the host of this event, will be adding you as a speaker so that you can share your screen and present your uh, deck. And uh, we have Nitish here from the product folks who will be uh, taking care of the time. The time you have to present is six minutes. And any time after that, uh, Utsav can utilize for Q&A session with um, the finalists themselves, after which we go on to the next presenter. Uh, Nitish will um, interrupt you if you, uh, once you have reached the five minute mark, just to let you know that you have one minute re remaining so that you can um, prioritize what to speak about and wrap up your presentation. I hope uh, everyone online and all the finalists have been clear. If you have any doubts, just let us know in the chat box. And Naman, um, if you're ready, please go ahead. Sure. Um, all the very best to all the finalists. <laughs> Sumanth, you will be going and I uh, hope you're ready. Tanya will be, if once you raise your hand, Tanya will be adding you as a speaker. You can yeah. be ready. Am I audible? Yeah. Yeah, I will share my screen. Okay, is my screen visible? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I will. Can I start? Sure. Sure. Please. Okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. I'm Sumanth Bagade, and I will be doing the presentation for the second problem statement, the student referral program for bit class. So this will be the structure of the presentation. Uh, so first of all, let's talk about online learning. So online learning has been basically understood as the massive open online courses, but it's a different type of online learning, which is on a train called as uh, cohort based courses or CBCs. So if you see, there are certain differences between the two, but if there's one distinguishing factor of CBCs is that is it's, it's focus on communities, right? It focus on building communities uh, for learners. Uh, and if, if you want to map down CBCs based on the scale and the pricing, so cohort based courses actually commands a premium price and high scale in the market. Uh, let's talk about the positioning for bit class. So the core based courses in bit class, uh, as you can see in the screen, they actually incorporate good features of the CBCs. But uh, maybe if you want to bit, cl bit class will want to improvise on their offerings, they can also have interlinked learning in their courses and also enable students to support each other after the courses to uh, kind of form the alumni network. Changing. If you are changing the slide. 
Oh, I am on the second slide, the bit class positioning slide. No, I don't think you need to present it. You can just change it without the maximize mode. Uh, what are on. you seeing on this screen the first, right now? The first slide. Yeah, you must have shared a window, so that's why only the. Yeah, you can, you can close the presentation. Yeah, you can change it from here. That's perfect. Uh, or maybe. You can just zoom in a little bit from the bottom right corner, and that should be good enough. Uh, maybe I will share the whole screen then. Sure. Entire screen. Actually, I'm using uh, AirMate for the first time. I don't know how this works. Uh, okay. okay. Are you able to see? Are you able to see the first slide? Uh, just one second. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah, please, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah, so I was talking about. Uh, so let's talk about the positioning for BitClass. I will continue from here. So if you see, BitClass has incorporated uh, good features of CBCs in the courses. Uh, but if they want to improvise on, they want to improvise on uh, improving the core courses, they can work on interleaving learning, or they can also let students support each other after the course to kind of form an alumni network, uh, right? So let's talk about the current reference BitClass. So as you can see, uh, the current referral option uh, is hidden in the top bar. So it has low visibility compared to the other options. And it's actually one set of referral campaign. Uh, so there, there's only incentive for the referrer, but no incentive as it for the referee or someone who joins the big class. And if we go by some assumption uh, numbers, then actually it's a ROI positive campaign. So let's talk about user personas. We have two user personas, basically. The first one is someone who is passionate about a hobby and wants to generate a second like passive source of income by becoming proficient in a specific niche. Uh, some of the pain points for this user persona can be that she wants to access multiple courses in a single niche. So maybe she can find out if, uh, you know, uh, if the passive income will be sustainable. So she wants to get more access to paid courses in a single niche. And the second user persona is someone who is a taken entrepreneurship enthusiast. He believes in career upskilling and he, he wants to work on his own ideas and wants to take an entrepreneur plunge. But he lacks the hands-on knowledge. Uh, there's no enough net network for him. And the again, same pain point that he wants to access multiple courses uh, in a single niche. He don't want to pay for each and every course in order to become better in, in, a, in a course. Right? So let's talk about referral features. We have four referral features. The first one is a two-sided referral system in which both the referrer and the referee are incentivized, uh, right? So, but it actually builds up on, upon an assumption that BitClass has a weekly cap on the number of hours user can watch free classes. So we can shoot this referral feature in, in, in the user journey. So user gets a request for referral in the user journey, then shares the link, uh, referee completes certain steps in some or certain steps of activation in record span of time. Uh, he gets a monthly pass to view the choice of his course, but uh, referrer gets three minutes of videos to watch. And what the referrer gets is actually a milestone based or a tier based reward system. So more he does the referrals, the more will be the rewards he will get. So uh, these are the wire. Uh, these are some of the wireframes for the feature one. As you can see, uh, some good choices of copywriting to enable the user to to persuade the user to perform the action. Uh, these are the wireframes for the user to track his invites. He, if he invites the user, what steps of activation that uh, user has performed. Uh, so he can send them the reminder. And uh, he can also like, you know, so get his rewards. We can also see his positioning on a leaderboard. Leaderboard is actually works very well for referral features. So you can actually see how much invites he has done position to others. Month, you have uh, about five minutes. Okay, so this is the milestone system, and we will be focusing on generating the, on focusing on giving the non cash referral incentives. So it has been also that they are more effective in a referral feature. So uh, again, the referee screen for new user, again, good uh, elements of copywriting to enable the user to join BitClass, simple call to action value proposition. The second referral feature actually is a one side referral campaign where the referee uh, is in in incentivized, but one who actually invites gets nothing tangible in return. Uh, again, four step simple flow chart uh, for the this referral feature to work, and it actually works for users with high NPS or you know loyal users for the product. The third is again a one sided referral campaign, but reward is given to the one who invites, not to the one who joins. Uh, so, but it actually builds upon some assumption that we are launching a new course, uh, and uh, we can have a waiting list so that user can get a feeling of exclusivity. The 
fourth electrical feature actually worked on hypothesis that we can try virality by adding social elements outside of the product. So maybe user can, user now gets a digital company certificate. He can actually he can also get a score in an evaluation test. Then uh, he can share that in social channels with a built-in referral program, and uh, it can lead to new user acquisition. Prioritization. So the first one and the fourth one actually have low engineering uh, hours required in terms of effort. So they can be prioritized as go to the market uh, for the efforts to work. Then we can work on the second and the third referral, which actually requires more engineering effort. Okay. Uh, so general discussion on the referral campaign. There are different users of the referral campaign. So there are ones who never took the initiative to participate in campaign. Some who participate but don't complete the goal, and the uh, ambassadors who have completed referral goal at least once or more. So our target should be to convert more number of neutrals and plain refers to ambassadors. So that will drive the user growth for a bit plus. Uh, KPN success I'm metrics. Uh, the first one is very important, the referral coefficient. Yeah, referral coefficient, it's actually, uh, we can track it where we stand in terms of in industry benchmark. The second is participant, participant share rate actually comes from referral coefficient itself. Uh, CAC to LTV ratio definitely should be lower than other channels for referral to work. And invitation click through rate and invitation conversion rate, it actually depends on how much click participant has uh, made and how much they have become part of the campaign. The campaign. Uh, yeah, sample budgeting, there is no fixed way to budget, but I have done some specific calculation to find out what can be the ROI. Uh, and again, highlighting the point that the more the number of ambassadors we have, we talked in the last slide, the more the number of ambassadors we convert to users who come do the efforts, the more can be the ROI for any referral program. Uh, so that's my presentation. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, Sumit. Uh, fairly detailed and comprehensive, so I don't have any immediate questions. Uh, just, just one thing. Uh, did you see the entire user journey on the app or the web? Uh, did you try any of the classes? Uh, I yeah, on the app, I uh, enrolled in some workshops. Okay. okay. And free free classes. So free classes, I registered then i got some notification that the class is live then i kind of uh, i asked some questions to the instructor i found out how the live chat live mm -hmm. chat goes how i can see the profiles of the users who are become a part of that cohort uh yeah i think that's it that mm -hmm. i observed over i think four five to six days time period mm -hmm. okay great that's great so in the entire user journey if you had one choice uh, where would you place that reference to in the entire journey from sign up to registration, attendance, and then paying and then repeating and whatnot? So, like multiple things that you can do in a, in a linear journey. But mm -hmm. if you uh, had just one choice, then where would you put it? Uh, so, if we talk about the first referral, it can be placed when the user is watching a free class. Mm -hmm. uh, if a 60 minute uh, class, uh, maybe at the 30th or 40 minute, we can say that, oh, your quota is over. You need to invite users to continue watching the free classes, but that it kind of be a more friction to the users. No, are you talking so, about the live class or the recorded content? A recorded class, because my first refer feature actually builds upon an assumption that we can have some weekly cap for the user to watch uh, free uh, free courses hmm. on uh, on the class. So maybe we okay. can position that in that user journey. But I think that it, it can be a very uh, I mean, user will not be able to watch. It will pause his journey right away. Maybe mm -hmm. you can, maybe after completing that uh, course, then when he tries to start different course, then we can highlight that, okay, you are, you need to, you know, invite new users to continue watching mm -hmm. free classes, or you can enroll by, you know, in a paid course. So that, they, that can be two touch points. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Simon. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Samanth, for your presentation. Um, Naman, over to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Samanth is done. Yeah. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Shanti. Yashan Shivam, if you could raise your hands, Tanya will be adding you on stage.
Hello, uh, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, if you could just give me a second, yeah. sure, we'll be joining too. So yes, are you still in college or have you graduated? Yes, you can directly do guys. Yeah, I'm currently in fourth year. Okay. It's my pre-final year. All right. I'm sorry for making you guys wait. He's just joining. He just had some network issue. No way. Hello. Hi, sir. Yeah, hi, sir. Yes, you are. Yeah, hi, sir. Hi, hi, everyone. Yeah, sure. Yeah, can present? Yeah, sure. Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, my screen is visible yes yeah so hello everyone my name is shivan jaiswal and my team is, is yashri vasto and we are fourth year iit rurki student and yeah today we are going to present uh, uh, our product tear, tear down submission and the product we are focusing on is bit class so talking about bit class like bit class provides the users uh, live learning classes in various categories where they can attend uh, free classes and if they if they are interested in the particular classes they can continue uh, by enrolling in the class in the course and the problem statement we are focusing on uh, is this is the first one like user activation and uh, where like where the where the new new users sh should be activated and they can be activated from uh, by accomplishing these three uh, at least one one of the these three uh, points uh, which are attending one live classes for more than 10 minutes, spending 15 minutes watching recording of the past classes, uh, registering for two free classes. And the points we are focusing on uh, are these, attending one live classes for 10 minutes, and the second one is registering for two free classes. And the next, we yes, will continue. Uh, talking about the user personas, we focus on for uh, this problem. The first person is a final year student, Varun. He uh, is in his final year of college and in the near future, he would need to apply to various companies to secure a job. So he wants to become a graphic designer and wants to learn Illustrator and Procreate. Uh, his major frustrations uh, uh, in achieving this are the price of the certified courses at various platforms. The duration of the courses provided on various platforms is really long. And the lack of mentor interaction in uh, online classes uh, in all on, not online classes actually the other alternative for classes is YouTube but there is no online mentor interaction over there and the other persona that we focused on is uh, Padma Shwasav she is a housewife and uh, her kids have grown up and she lives uh, in she lives in Dehradun with her husband and most of her time is free so she wants to learn baking knitting and basics about do-it-yourself craft the frustrations are confusion due to the amount of options available and the lack of pro proper structured courses and the lack of direct interaction to clear doubts. Uh, Sahil, could, if you could move down. Uh, pain points and opportunities. The pain points that we experienced in the whole journey were the lack of a proper onboarding experience for the new users leaves them clueless with numerous options, yet no particular direction or goal to follow with the platform. And the home page lacks personalized content for the user, and hence the user has to spend the initial time on the app searching for the classes that they are interested in. And uh, the interest section where we can select uh, which all categories we are interested in is not easily discoverable by the user. It's inside the profile and uh, is not easily discoverable by the user. Opportunities that we saw over here were a great part of getting activation right has to do with smooth introduction of features. Uh, that's what we read somewhere. So that it's incredibly easy for the new users to not only start working with your product, but to derive value from it. And users are people, people are unique. 
personalization keeps users engaged creates deeper relationships with customers and increases activation and retention rates and another <coughs> opportunity that we saw was like by offering incentives we, uh, we can give users another reason to fulfill their activation tasks the solutions that we focused on the first solution is onboarding so we designed an onboarding experience for the users to understand their motivations and interests and the uh, this is one of the uh, completing the user onboarding process successfully is one of the most important activation milestones and understanding the users interests and motivations helps us to provide a personalized experience to their home page which in turn would he help us to increase user engagement and motivate the users to complete the activation task so first is the splash screen and then we have the uh, a screen where they add the number and then they get the otp after that the onboarding starts in the first page we uh, we ask who are you so these are the various categories uh, that we have provided taking into consideration the categories provided for the teachers where they have to select uh, which category is the content focused on uh, second yeah uh, what makes you join with a uh, bit last so this helps us know the users motivations and commitments and after that, uh, we give the user a chance to pick up five interests. And after they pick these five interests, the user onboarding is complete. Uh, and we have added a progress bar over here so that the user feels that, uh, the, that the user exactly knows yes, where they are. And how, okay. uh, Sahil, next. Is it not loading? Yeah, it's still. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Huh. The welcome screen. The welcome screen has suggested classes for the users on the basis of their interest selected during the onboarding. These classes provide the users with the necessary guidance and an opportunity for an hands on assessment of the platform's potential. So these are the classes based on, on which are the most popular classes of all the categories that they have selected during the onboarding. Uh, Sahil. Yeah, and next feature is like personalization. As user has already gone through the onboarding experience and selected the particular categories, so the home page uh, is now personalized according to the user's interest. And like, it's uh, through through the personalization feature, uh, the experience can increase the product activation and reduce time uh, to the value, and the users can also re relate to the content. And we have also added a section over here to grab the user attention as well as to motivate them to uh, to buy to to register for the two free classes uh, by giving them incentives. And and yeah, the and and over clicking over clicking over here, like the users will uh, navigate to the free course section. And other than that, we have also provided the section in the notification section also so that users can uh, users can like go to this section from the per multiple places and the next the next feature we have given is in the class like uh, to here we have, we want to achieve the we want to achieve the activation number three uh, activation number one to, so that so that the users can like uh, attend the classes for up to 10 minutes so we have added a new feature over here a timer which will start as the user will join the class and after completing the 10 minutes continuously this timer will like uh, convert into the reward which the users can claim and this reward will be like the user will get 50 percent off from the full course and he can copy the code and yeah use it while buying the course and next feature we have added is, a, is in the feedback section like over, over the feedback section we we, we took very various scenarios like where the users can mistakenly leave the class so we gave here a rejoin class section uh, so that uh, to to aim the to aim the activation a so that users can rejoin the class yeah yes yeah. uh, talking about the user journey uh, so yes, this is the whole enough. yeah if you could give us 30 seconds more we'll just wrap it uh, login onboarding welcome screen and uh, uh, the personalized home so you can see over here uh, which all screens and where all we have provided the right intervention and the whole uh, user journey is visible in the screen uh, could you move on to the next screen
uh, metrics are not star metric is the activation rate the total number of activated users by the total number of users signed up into 100 and the time of activation to determine the time taken by the user to complete an activation task and the success average is less than or equal to seven days and the total number of activated users average number of minutes spent in their first free class and the average number of registered free classes uh, sahil um, next and possible solution failures onboarding drop off in order to personalize the user's bit class experience and getting their preference as part of the onboarding, uh, we have increased the number of onboarding steps and that has created the uh, possibility of the user dropping off early due to the number of steps and engagement post activations. Users might just obtain the benefits, payoffs after attending live classes for the target time of 10 minutes and then they might just drop off and not complete the entire class. Effect on the business model, offering the users 100 bit cash for registering two free classes doesn't account for how it might benefit or affect the balanced economy of the business model planned by bit class. Next, and this is all the prioritization that we've done. And according to this, the personalized home screen is the highest priority. Then comes the welcome screen, then in class timer, and then the on Uh Thank you, guys. This was the presentation that we had. Thanks. <clears throat> Thanks a lot, guys. Uh, one quick question. Uh, First of all, you had placed those markers very tactically so that they uh, tag them without interfering with them uh, too much. So that's, that's okay. But doubling down on that, uh, on the part where you said that we should take the user's preferences, what kind of questions would you want to ask? How many questions did you think a little more around that uh, for, a, for a platform like ours where people may not be coming? intentionally with the with a very clear intent of buying something or registering for something they might be exploring to. how would you what would you ask how would you ask uh, uh shivam if you could present once again uh, if you could just go back to that screen quickly uh so the basic questions that you wanted to ask was what was the base motivation that they had mm -hmm. when they joined the uh when they came on bit class mm -hmm. and <clears throat> after that we wanted to know their preferences like the five interests that they had uh the next screen and in this uh we wanted this because when we joined the bit class platform it is the same for everyone there's no like uh what am i interested in and we thought that if we provided a more personalized exp experience it would just help in the user engagement okay, okay. okay. all right is there is there some maths behind these five interests or it could be three seven seventeen uh, no, uh, it was like the five is the most general number that is used in various platforms. That's why we went ahead with it. Okay. Okay. What about uh, the potential drop offs that you might face? You're asking so many questions. Yeah, uh, the uh, potential drop off is a major problem over here because of the number of steps. So uh, that is one major drawback of the solution. That's why I think we can cut down on some questions and just ask the major ones like mm -hmm. uh, we can directly get them to log in and instead of asking what makes you join bit class and which category you belong to we can just directly have one screen where they just pick their interests like just directly one screen of interest and then they can go to the home screen mm -hmm. interesting okay do, do you remember any product where preference was taken from you and you kind of felt very smooth where you know things got personalized really well Explicitly, uh, explicitly. If we talk about personalization, like uh, that, uh, the products that I'm gonna name, they might not relate to this, but like Spotify is one, Spotify is one, Netflix is one, where they mm -hmm. ask which uh, preference do you have, like what all singers mm -hmm. you like, what kind of music you like, and then they create that whole personalized content for the home screen and everything. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Cool. I don't have any more questions. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Shivam. Thank you, Yash. Um, just one thing before Naman spins the wheel, I think, I assume, uh, I think Yash and Shivam mentioned they had connectivity issues, so which is why they may not have switched on the video. But if the uh, next few contestants could preferably switch on the video, it would be more interactive for Utsav also to ask questions instead of to a screen. Yeah, that's it from my side. Naman, you can take it forward. Great. Okay. Yeah. So I think Madhav is still not here. So we'll go ahead with these three.
Thank you so much. Uh, Pearl, if you could just uh, raise your hand. Tanya will be adding you onto the stage. Hello, everybody. Let me know if I'm audible. Okay. Yeah. I'll share my screen. So, Pearl, are you working or are you studying? I'm studying currently at Lady Sri Ram College. Okay. Oh, I, I forgot to ask the previous contestants if they attended a class. In the class. I'll, ask them, I'll ask this to everyone. That's the default question we started. I uh, tried to attend a live class, but then there was nobody in that live class. Okay, very early or very late? I don't what? know. Uh, the live class was going on at that time, so I don't know what was the time for that. I entered and I think so. Only the teacher was there and he or she was on mute, so okay, so maybe, the maybe experience would have been better. Sure, sure. So maybe a little early. All right, all right. My screen is visible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right, so I will be presenting my deck on the first problem statement, which is to design an activation journey for the user. Right, so I did some primary research and I landed on some insights. First and very important, 60% of the users did start out to develop a new hobby but then dropped in between due to lack of motivation. This helps us to understand our consumers. And also 40% of the users whom I interviewed felt that online learning is lonely. Then I asked them who preferred live classes. I asked them, what is your main reason of preferring a live class so that we can market the features of our live class accordingly? Their answers were, it helps them in live doubt clearing, in real time feedback on their projects from great people in the field to stick to a learning schedule and to remain accountable. Also, they want live classes for developing networks in the domain with teachers, peers, etc. And the last uh, reason was for peer to peer learning. Uh, then uh, upon the customer journey analysis, we can see that the users are being shown irrelevant suggestions on the home screen. We do not find a technical syllabus being mentioned for the class. For example, for a Makrami class, the user does not know what specific knot types will be covered in the class, what techniques will be covered in the class. Not mentioning technical syllabus lowers the credibility. There are too many options on the home screen, irrelevant to the user, Bitcoin, interior design, etc. And we all know confusion is equals to action paralysis. This leads to user dropping off. Current activation journey is non-personalized because of that we have this extra unnecessary filtering step which can be eliminated by personalization. Users do not get much details from trailer, it's very basic and the two CTAs on the same page as we can see and the details of the course are very wordy and basic. Course highlights are very generic, there is no week wise syllabus and I'll now do the competitor analysis. Domestica, which is a learning platform for creatives, focuses highly on teacher branding. It has very long professional trailers which shows, you know, teachers' projects, achievements, they have the international clients they have worked with. It, the trailer also gives a glimpse into the technical stuff which will be covered in the course. And the trailer also portrays the outcome-based approach which Domestica has because they show you what will be the project which you'll be able to do by yourself at the end of the course. Every course, every class has a learning outcome and a specific capstone project attached to it. This increases users' intent to enroll in a course. Front row, again, long four-minute trailers, amazing teacher branding, comprehensive course structure, yellow class, uncluttered screen, no tabs, and vertical-only scrolling. For pain points, for big class, we 
know that we have irrelevant suggestions at the home screen causing the users to drop off we can include pre skill a pre quiz to ascertain the level of uh, the user and their preferences whether they have any specific skill in mind or they just explorer right now and according to this pre quiz they can begin personalized recommendations on the home page and personalization can drive up the activation and the retention rates the second pain point is that user is not sure about the class quality that can be resolved by making long professional trailers focusing on teacher branding and learning outcomes of the class teacher branding will make a user want to attend the class of that particular teacher only they want to know what that teacher has done special in their life how shadowing that teacher and getting mentorship from that teacher can allow them to be great in their lives as well so teacher branding is something is front row and domestica has focused on a lot and they have found success with it so we should focus on teacher branding in the trailers itself we should include uh, video testimonials which is social proof we should also show claims to the technical topics which will be covered in the class this will increase the credibility and there is a lack of instant gratification because we have to enroll for a live class if it's not available and i can't do anything instantly so we have to make quick bits easy to locate for the user and we have to reduce the clutter on the screen there is no intermediate or advanced live class right now so we have to create them and user does not feel comfortable with online learning this is again a pain point user feels that online learning is lonely we can add social learning features to our platform like 15 minutes of networking session with the like minded people at the end of the live class community is a scarce resource content sorry we have crossed five minutes okay community is a scarce resource content is easily available everywhere right now so we should focus on the community aspect also and that can be built by uh, the social learning features like networking session new features include comprehensive trailers which i have talked about which will be demonstrating the teachers credentials their achievements giving a glimpse into class video testimonials will be there and then the other one is the networking session why do we need a networking session to create share worthy movements for the users so that they can share the screenshots of those networking sessions or maybe jamming sessions for singers on their social media handles it can increase their psychological satisfaction and because of a networking session a superior user experience would be created which no other app right now in the industry is offering and people connect to people more than they do to apps so this can be a great way to make people attend those live classes which they register for and it will also increase the conversion rate of the live class the success metrics for uh, the comprehensive trailers because of great trailers the registration rate of live class rate would go up the time in app would go up and the conversion rate of course would go up and then we have the networking sessions because of that people will feel motivated to attend the sessions which they have uh, enrolled for and the live class retention rate will go up because the networking session will be at the end people will make sure that they attend the entire live class just to make sure they do not miss out on that networking session then these are the bio frames of the prequels the personalized onboarding screen on the onboarding screen i have included a personalized social proof sure uh, personalized social proof for example for a singer the personalized social proof would be join the community of 1 lakh singing hobbyists and over here i have specified the benefits of live class that you learn live from top 1% instructors get your doubts cleared instantly this will be a carousel form of splash screen and this is the personalized home screen i have focused on decluttering it there is a hamburger menu all the tabs have been converted to the hamburger menu it reduces clutter and confusion now there is a trailer at the top which will be personalized according to the pre quiz the trailer will be auto play to reduce the friction then we will have the benefits of taking the live class highlighted right under the trailer and there's also the cta of no more which the user can click on to go on to the page of the class to know more about the class then i have made sure that quick bits are there on the home screen itself so when we scroll down we get quick bits 
and there is progressive disclosure of quick bits to make sure that it reduces the clutter and they are there on the home screen itself so that user can get some instant gratification also out of the app. That's it. That was my deck. I'll I'm open to questions now. Thanks a lot, Pearl. I think uh, you have not just touched upon product related solutions, but some operational solutions too, wherein that involves shooting trailers and whatnot. Maybe not uh, part of the scope, but yeah, always, always helps in thinking. So that's great. Uh, can you go back to the slide once more? Sure. I think the problems and solutions slide that you have. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So some of some of them are operational, some of them are purely product led. So I'll just pick up a couple of them which are which could be product led. Let's say personalized recommendations on home page. If you can just double down for the first thousand users on your platform, or let's say having a starting point, how would you get started? How exactly would you build this? Okay, so we need requests for that, which is a preference yeah. survey which will be taken and I had made the wireframes for the preference survey we can choose their hobby or skills or they can even choose that they're not looking for anything specific they're just exploring maybe this option can be placed at the very first place because this is a majority of the users for bit class then the level will also be asked this will also allow us to have the data regarding what sort of classes are required right now on big class what i found was most of the courses and classes are beginners only at least the life classes mm -hmm. we can try to go ahead with hyper specific life class content instead of beatboxing classes and in an introductory class let us go with a brazilian percussion technique for beatboxing let us see what is the result of that because i have noticed that domestica and uh, uh, and yellow class, both of them are dealing with hyper specific topics for their classes, and that allows us to cater to a wider variety of users and not only those who are beginners. So, uh, the topics which we will serve to them can be known to us uh, when we know their level. When we know their level, we can serve them the videos of the topics accordingly. Okay. Uh, can you just go back to the slide again? Yeah. Uh, when you said reduce the clutter on the screen and you said that you can get rid of the horizontal navigation for categories, how would you expose your offerings, your categories to the users? What are the ways in your mind? Right. So right now what I found was that under, under the classes tab, the user sees the same info just structured differently we have the quick bits tab and i just a second we have the quick bits tab too which i had included on the home screen itself i have included the content of quick bits on the home screen itself and then courses and my classes all of these we can say all of these tabs are for users who are already pretty deep into the app Right. So they, if they have enrolled for a course or they have a class scheduled, they have been with the app for a long while and they do not need tabs. Tabs are for discovery. They can go to hamburger menus to lead them, which will help them to, uh, you know, go to the action which they desire. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. I'm, 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 no, no, no. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pearl. Um, so I think we have uh, Madhav with us as well. We have the final finalists who was in there. And uh, Naman, over to you. Yeah, Mother, if you could raise your hand, Tanya will be adding you onto the stage.
Madhav, uh, are, you, are you there? Yep, Madhav is there. Yeah. Right. Hey. Hey, hi, Madhav. Hey, I'm sorry. So, um, so let's get started. Just a second. see the screen? Yes. Uh, just, let me see if you can. Ooh. So uh, let, let me start. Okay. Uh, so the topic is, you know, improve activation for big class. And, uh, <clears throat> so, uh, you know, I tried and reframe the problem statement which I was given and make it more, you know, like uh, more def defined. Okay. So more, you know, crystallized. So the thing is that uh, like we have to design a user flow in which uh, uh, okay. so we have to design a user flow to help, you know, not, you know le uh, learners on the class to discover the core value provision of the platform by activating them. Okay. Now moving on. So I will be taking the following approach for this, uh, like about the big class, then who, who are the target segment, then going about the user research part, the pain points and the prioritization part, then coming to the solution part, in which the, like the mind web for the solution and the mock-ups and the success metrics. Okay. So like uh, going quickly to the uh, big class about, so in this like big class exists, you know, to help people realize their dreams and aspirations. So how the bit class works is, you know, by helping people learn anything they want to explore with the great teachers are there. Right? And they are basically a platform that uh, acts as a platform as a service to help teacher teach and uh, learners learn from, you know, uh, different teachers out there. Okay. So the business model is straightforward, a commission-based model. So the target segment uh, of the user we are targeting here is like the users who are, you know, uh, between the demographic of 19 to 30 years old, who are Indian in, in tier one to tier two cities and who are, you know, comfortable with English language. And like further segmenting them based on the need that they have, uh, like the learning tech, whether they want to develop a new skill or improve an existing skill, hobby, passion or personal development. Okay. So uh, I went uh, forward and, you know, went through the research uh, for this and uh, formed the uh, objective first that what I want to research about. Okay. In general, basically, you know, general out outlook of people to, you know, how they learn, what are their habits, what are their roadblocks and specific to bit class also that, you know, like what is the expectation of the user before joining the class and uh, wh how do they feel about the sign process. So this are, this is all are the, my research objectives for this. So then I framed some user interviews questions, uh, like uh, how, how should I, you know, like, did they learn something new recently? How did they, you know, learn, go about learning it? What challenges did they face? All those questions I have, you know, put, it, put down over here. I also did a uh, usability testing of the current app with uh, two users, okay. Uh, my sample set was a bit low, but uh, I tried and, you know, extend maximum output from them like uh, how do they feel about the uh, looking at the first screen what the expectation do they have do they think they can drive some value from this app okay then coming to the pain points of the users uh, like uh, out of the user interview i found out you know like in general basically uh, like they are not sure which skill to pick up maybe which will be more beneficial for them they have limited time for improving and some are the hobbies self development 
who are seeking out fun and enjoyment while learning they want to connect with peers okay so now coming to the you know usability testing uh, pain points so uh, expectation with much was found in which when the user clicks on attend now and this screen comes up in which it says like you know the class will start in x uh, days y minutes or, or so so then the mindset of the user is you know to that the class will be happening right now so i need to attend it right now okay but then this screen shows up a uh, user enters the class but no one is actually there okay so this leads to a you know not very good user experience that uh, it is happening right now but no one is actually there okay then there were you know like not many other students were there in the class so normally it happens now that wherever we see the crowd we feel that to be you know more trustable place uh, whether it be a food joint or anything so uh, similarly with the same psychology user doesn't feel very confident and valuable if the number of people are less in the class okay also like if the user enters in the middle of the class then there is you know a uh, loss of context while uh, in the middle let's say you are entering a lecture halfway through right how would you relate to that in in that case so that's why I, I found out like you know the user feel left out, left out and exits the class to explore something else okay then the uh, the person Not doesn't have Okay. So the person doesn't have any serious motivation uh, and uh, doesn't know even like when the class will end. Okay, so that you know that uh, that mental model is not there. In which you say that okay, you know the class is from five to six p.m. Then like how much time is left for the class? Okay, when it will end? That was missing. And then you know like uh, hot selling at the end of near the end of class leads to major you know dropout rate. In which the person feels like you know maybe some uh, home shop kind of thing. in which uh, the people are selling like you know abhi khaydo abhi khaydo and it will end okay then coming to the registration part like uh, the upcoming date and time is not visible the person cannot relate to when it will happen in the future um like the timings are aren't flexible for people who are working let's say they uh, you know they are interested in the topic but they are not available at this time then order summary uh, page gives an impression of you know like they are about to pay some money to bit class though it is written that uh, like uh, over here it can be done but uh, that is the thing so uh, next is you know like uh, the uh, person can go to the uh, live class here after booking but it is not happening okay difficult to find class of interest uh, they are the common pain point like they cannot realize you know the actual value provision of bit class try before buy and there are some post user flows over there there are some tech bugs also found then i went ahead and for the user persona uh, just skipping it quickly so that i can come to solution okay so these are the pain points that are earlier mentioned so i just you know tried and uh, found, uh, find the most you know prevalent one which can be increased uh, like which can help in increasing the activation okay Like type before by didn't find relevant classes difficult to find posts. Sorry, how much time is left? Last one minute. Okay, so let me just quickly you know jump to the solutions part. Okay, so the solutions part that I am uh, you know uh, thinking of is uh, clear user benefits on the home screen, clear value provision over here. then personalization part over here okay like whether the person is male female and all those things and the option to skip and uh, taking the learning goal from the person okay so uh, the thing is that uh, on the home page only relevant classes should shown to show and it should be easy to you know discover the class of the interest menu will be what like this and uh, whether the person has selected hobby career development will be shown in, over here like this and only hobby related things will be shown over here classes okay uh, all the content over here on the home screen whether the sorry time is okay no no way you can complete it is a couple of slides left is okay yeah so you know like uh, the the content over on the home screen should be you know re relevant to the what the person has chosen let's say the person has chosen for the mail right but if the person is seeing like nail paint class over here then the kind of the mindset uh, changes okay um the filters part over here is there and um, okay so this is an interesting thing 
in which the timer part is there okay like the 15 minutes the person can only attend the class after it has started till 15 minutes okay so that the loss of con context doesn't happen and it also acts as a hook for a person to quick join uh, well, uh, join quickly okay if this uh, timer ex exceeds then this card will not be shown here to any new user okay but the old user who has joined once can still see this okay uh, then for the uh, upcoming live class the date and time of the next class should be shown over here and uh, like the as a social proof like these many participants have been registered acts as a you know great trigger for the person so uh, like uh, then uh, I, I propose to remove the uh, the last screen of uh, registering to a class in which uh, you know like after uh, register for free the user is taken to uh, order summary page okay that that isn't in, even required okay on over here the person can select the slot right away and register for free okay reducing the friction also the time remaining on the class should be shown over here okay. Now quickly the success metrics, uh, like the percentage change in the new users who have registered at least uh, at least two free, free live classes within seven days, percentage change in the users who have attended a uh, free class for more than 10 minutes within seven days, and uh, percentage of average number of minutes watched in a free live class by a new user before activation. And one very interesting uh, secondary metric uh, that is there is that like the percentage of new user who skips either the personalization of screen while onboarding. So it will give an understanding that, you know, people are liking it or not. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Thank you very much. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Madhav. I don't have any immediate questions, but uh, you you attended a class and then where, where was the biggest pain point did you feel where you almost felt like, you know, uninstalling the app or you never coming back? Okay. So let me just, you know, quickly go back to this part, the pain point part. So, you know, like for the live class thing, I felt when uh, the expectation mismatch is there, no? Mm -hmm. Like when the user says that uh, it is, it says the app that it is happening right now. But when the user clicks on it and it doesn't, maybe it says and it will happen in future. Okay. So that, that creates a kind of, you know, like uh, it is cheating. The app is cheating with me. It is, it is saying it is happening right now, but it is not happening. Okay. Or maybe if I enter the class and uh, like it says that, you know, uh, no one is there. Only, only I am the only one there. Then mm -hmm. why it is written uh, attend now, right? So the the thing is that we are even capturing those exits, right? For the activation thing, we are even capturing those exits, right? Which I think is a false trigger for uh, false activation calculation, okay? Because due to these reasons, if the person is you know uh, enters the class and no one is there, what is the person supposed to do, right? The person will exit only no. Then mm -hmm. that will be adding up to the activation metric that, okay, the activity, activation is going down, activation is going down. But that is the one of the major factor also, that whether the class is even happening or not, right, from where the user is exiting. Right, so this was this was one of the common issues we had been facing. I think it was a bug that when the class is not live, it should not show up on the pop-up. So I think as Correct. we see this being uh, addressed, but yes, get your, get your idea that even assuming that thing is fixed and the class is live, truly live, only when it's live. Right. Are there even then there would be you know people entering early and entering late and and you know like uh, for the registering the class uh, when I register a class and I go to my section like my class is zone so mm -hmm. even there it says like if the class is scheduled for you know next day but even on the register page like after registration it says like go to live class okay mm -hmm. so that button is not a bug right it has been placed intentionally over there mm -hmm. so go to live class what does that mean that means like the person can go right right away into the class. Mm -hmm. right. so like that that is another thing and uh, I think uh, so the most important one is um, and you know flexibility for talking about the registration part the flexibility uh, I, to the users whom I interviewed they found that the flexibility was not very great in, mm -hmm. it, in it okay like uh, if they are working and so like my sister I, I interviewed her so she was like you know I am working I, I am interested in arts but I cannot attend this one like then she exits the app okay so what could be a solution for that so uh, you know like i i had uh, there there can be two approaches for this okay one is in which you increase the number of classes okay in uh, of the by the teacher that that is one approach okay that is very you know straightforward approach but that is also difficult to do because you know uh, like uh, 
telling all the teachers to be more available and that, that is on their their part the second approach can be which might or might not you know go away with go with the uh, bit class vision of the product is having a recorded session for live class okay trial class mm -hmm. kind of thing okay in which a, a teacher records a live class okay uh, a trial class beforehand in which you know there is very good setup of the things okay like great presentation great setup background and good experience okay the the teacher records it and the person can you know uh, attend it anytime okay then there can be q and a sessions live q and q and a sessions let's say uh, they they will be regular okay q and a sessions they mm -hmm. can be of short duration let's say 30 minutes okay so then the person who wants to attend anything can attend anytime anywhere right and if the person have the doubt okay then that person can attend the q and a session but in the recorded session the person the representation representative from the bit class team can be there okay for mm -hmm. you know uh, clarifying some doubts or pitching the a coupon and all those things but then the dependency from the teacher will be you know will be removed okay and the the person will get a good user ex good experience of you know a, a good branded content over there okay. okay okay so there are two approaches but i think like uh, it depends on uh, how uh, they you want to solve it so what i found in uh, like another competitor like fronto is that you know like they doesn't they do not commit that the person who is giving the live class will that the only person who will be teaching afterwards right mm -hmm. so they can the person can select after uh, like attending the live class that what method they want to go with so they have to solve this problem statement a bit differently okay all right like abhi abhi class koi aur de rahe but baad mein koi aur de sakte hai in that way hmm so they they have more you know uh, bandwidth they have created more circulation of features in that way hmm hmm just pulling your like what happens if people come in saying that amit trivedi will take a class but it, but he doesn't ha ah, so so that that's approach i am not even favor of okay hmm. so i i was just telling right. that uh, you know just extend uh, yeah yeah, yeah. no no it is chalo theek hai thanks thanks madam thanks for your time yeah. all right thank you very much bye Thank you so much, Madhav. Uh, Utsav, I, did you remember to ask him whether he's studying or not? <laughs> oh yes, I forgot to ask Madhav. No, no, no. I saw his uh, thing. No, it's written on top. He's working. Acha, okay, okay. He did not tell me which class did he attend. Oh, he missed the class. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Thanks, Madhav. Got Thank it. you so much, Madhav. Um, Thank you. Naman, I think we have two teams left. Just toss a coin, no? <laughs> Need to do this. <laughs> Ame, if you could raise your hand, we will add you on stage. It's uh, just so that the, it's fair and nobody complains about me going first, you going first. People do complain then. Okay. I'm. Uh, I'm assuming some iterations we've had before. <laughs> We're leaving scope for complaints, so. Okay. No worries. Unless uh, somebody says we can't make it, then we let them go. Ame is here, so. Yeah. Hi, so. Hi. Okay. Uh, sharing my screen. So you're working, I believe, right? Yeah, I'm working. Okay. As a product analyst. Okay. All good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can start. All right. Uh, so good evening, uh, everyone, and uh, you know, thanks to Bitlas team to creating such an amazing platform. Uh, I recommended it to so many friends and so many relatives. Everyone who came because everyone is bored of YouTube. So I know I had a selfish reason for the same. That is, you know, to conduct a certain kind of a user research. However, it's a great platform to you know learn skills, pursue hobbies in a structured manner. so some of the people ended up uh, you know taking up the course taking up the live classes and some of them didn't so let's understand this side from their perspective that you know how can we bridge the gap between users and this technology that exists so so that bitlas can achieve their goal right so uh, here is the index i'll just skip it it is a pretty generic 
so a few assumptions that i want to state is that uh, you know bit class is not focused on content itself but also focused on introduction and interaction within the peers and with uh, with the teacher also also uh, you know it, it is okay if the user wa- like attends the live class in a, in an audio version right uh, because it is kind of a glitch i guess where the uh, user can minimize the app but still it can be converted into a feature because a busy user can attend the class as well okay so breaking down the problem statement so who is the user new user uh, what needs to be done needs to be activated within the first seven days how uh, he can you know uh, we can uh, bit class can efficiently show the perks by you know making the user attend live classes registering for them and watching the recordings why this should be done so that a bit class achieves one step closer to achieving the product market fit to achieving the business model so that the user pay for the full courses by you know activating them and also more the data uh, more accurate the personalization and all of those things so the success metrics are regarding uh, attending live classes the session duration of the live class should increase average course registration should increase also the activity and average session duration of recording should also increase so these are the success metrics stated in the problem statement so i spoke to four or five five users and uh, you know kind of amalgamated them into two so let's see uh, so first is uh, first is arjun uh, a young male working professional from a tier 1 city zoya a female um, a middle aged from a tier 1 tier 2 city and uh, is a business woman so being from different places and having different goals and frustrations uh, arjun wants to uh, learn on bit class sees bit class as a learning platform to learn new skills but is busy in the day due to his work uh, and zoya wants to learn skills to uh, convert them into some kind of uh, you know uh, job or a business okay so the user story so uh, on on let's say day 0 people get uh, zoya and arjun get aware of this by using play store or you know just some kind of like i told like 10 uh, friends of mine so let's say uh, they get aware through mouth publicity now on day 1 they onboard the app now there is no login onboarding so it eases the whole process also there is a short tutorial so uh, i totally agree with usso when he said that you know the onboarding quiz can lead to drop offs also there might be a place that the user user has come to discover because i discovered bit class as a complete completely as an explorer so i don't know what my hobbies are right there are so many and i don't know in which mood i am and, and what kind of experience that i want to have so it's perfectly good and what if the uh, data algorithm doesn't work right so the user says i love music and photography but what if there are no uh, courses for no uh, courses on the users level for music and photography so which is why uh, let's see uh, let's su- suppose that the user directly lands on the home page after onboarding okay so uh, now first of all getting aware of live classes and exploring them to attend so if you can just uh, you know uh, uh, see the left hand side where is the current screen is presented and uh, it is kind of an overwhelming experience there are 6 to 10 classes going live at a time and the user drops off because he can't make a decision now come to the uh, right hand side right so uh, and compare between this two what is the difference so the difference is uh, here in we have br- broken down the title or the name of the class also we have highlighted teachers uh, Uh, what kind of teachers recognition right so, so i actually went into the teachers uh, like a manual a teacher description and saw some are national record holder some have an experience on all of those things right so it, it feels good to learn from such kind of people they should be highlighted also if you can watch the video and just tell me ki uh, what is the thing that captures your mind right captures your eye so uh, did, did you notice the red boundary out of the stern classes the user is uh, user is supposed to go on to the red boundary wala thing because it is a distinctive red boundary why it is a distinctive red boundary because there are 100 plus people watching and you know there has to be certain factor so there are there is more chances to get on to it so it leads to an easier decision making process oh, also, sorry, oh wow uh, this is just my first slide <laughs> okay Uh, so uh, just out of the stem classes we can you know kind of uh, have some tags for filtering i'll just quickly go through other ones So now, uh, give me a couple of more minutes, right? So if Zoya tries to attend a class of her or her interest, right? This can be based on discovery or this can be intent after she has explored the app. But there can be two possibilities. One, uh, it can be a success that the live class she can attend the live class or failure that the live class is yet to start. Now let's suppose the first one that the live class is has started. 
so uh, let's see the user journey uh, quickly i am uh, skipping the pain points so the user journey can be uh, we can make the user aware we can educate the user that what are the uh, perks of attending the live class till the end that you can get the recording you can get the coupon code and all let's suppose the user tries to uh, leave the app still right so there can be an option of minimizing the app so that the busy user can attend in audio version now this screen is already been taken that is the feedback screen but the feedback screen doesn't complete we can map it right so how we can map it if the user selects that she she is not interested in the topic so we can say okay we are finding the best courses for you and rather than giving an onboarding quiz we can use this feedback response in a real time so that the feedback loop is also complete and personalization is also achieved for better customer satisfaction coming to the failure uh, bitclass is giving a flappy bird game i suggest a game uh, where you know kind of like mark zuckerberg developed the hot or not game so maybe i am confused with my own hobbies and passion so i can quickly select which one i like so playing this game uh the uh, based on searching and scoring algorithms bit class can know what kind of a person uh, is playing the game and what kind of courses he or she might like next let's say after attending the live class uh, arjun uh, attending or not attending arjun goes on to registering for classes now registering for classes as someone mentioned uh, there is an unnecessary screen which leads to drop off so giving a same screen for quick actions next after the fifth carousel there is already a game that we developed we can handhold the user after fifth carousel because we don't want user spending too much time on the app going into the uh, discovery wara spiral right so we can say you are if you are still confused you can play the game right and here is just kind of easing the uh, course description uh, now after the uh, registering arjun and zoya both receive communications through push notification whatsapp and all of these things this can be used to delight the user now let's say uh, i have registered for the course but i am busy but i am you know the user is not motivated user has lost interest and uh, let's focus on the middle wala part right so because whatsapp uh, is an effective way of communication and many people use whatsapp images to put it as a story or what not right so by saying ki if uh, the course is regarding a certain topic we can I'm add certain, yeah just just uh, just a minute i am in the last part so uh, we can give certain interesting images facts with the uh, noti uh, with the whatsapp message to motivate the user right which can be also put as a story or a status so that the user feels more and more motivated now let's suppose uh, the registration has been done they have attended the class and the recording has been generated now uh, to uh, take the user to the recording part we have to make the user aware of the my recording page and also easier for him or her to watch the recording now coming to the first part so the user can you know easily uh, be given a sensory gif kind of in app notification non intrusive and second now notice the subtle difference between the hand holding that we did after the fifth carousel right so if you are still confused we firstly said that you can browse other categories but but after we know uh, recording has been generated we can change the cta to view recordings right plus we can give time stamps so that the user do doesn't have to keep on forwarding or keep on searching within different things but directly giving a time stamp for this one also uh, kind of uh, i'm uh, directly summarizing and not going through the metrics part but uh, you know what we did was kind of broke the journey uh, because uh, the user research that i conducted most of the people uh, went on to the live class and then started registering so uh, and then watch the recordings so based on this based on the impact urgency what is the bandwidth of the developers currently how much effort will it take from their side and user testing right so before actually releasing it we can conduct a certain kind of a user testing and after this we can say ki which solutions need to be prioritized with pain points to tackle first which section to tackle first and i guess uh, you know bitclass is already like at the top of its game i like bitclass uh, bitclass can become the next youtube uh, youtube because youtube has become boring youtube algorithms have become boring so i guess a bit class can achieve their goals just uh, you know kind of leveraging their product a bit and that's all thank you and thanks for giving me extra time thanks a lot ame that was quite something so what what is the one desktop effect sorry what is that one desktop effect that you okay. put in? uh one desktop effect all right so i read this about somewhere uh, which was ki if you are you know given let's say uh, 10 oranges and one mango your eye will turn to the mango so out of the 10 classes that you are given if one has a red boundary right so if you i will kind of okay so one has a red boundary 
and the others don't why one has the right boundary because 100 plus people are watching there is certain factor right now your eyes turn again to the red boundary now this is the bond restore effect mm -hmm, mm -hmm. where will you where will you use it because let's say 10 classes are live which one will you highlight uh, uh, so i have highlighted i have highlighted where 100 plus people are watching so i have attended certain classes where there are only five people watching and i have attended classes where there are 120 130 people watching so you know which creates a more social proof also that more the people are watching you know this kind of scale is more interesting seems more interesting so uh, this can be done i guess uh, and there can be n number of factors to do this also right based on previous data or based on rating or based on mm -hmm. you know, uh, like like you said maybe amit trivedi is doing a class over here so maybe giving that a red boundary so there can be a number of things but kind of distinctively presenting it to the user mm -hmm. so the most popular item you wish to highlight what about what the user wants to uh, attend that should be shown first what about that okay uh, if the user wants to attend now let, uh, now okay so uh, for me uh, let's suppose these are the tags that i have given right so let's suppose i am not interested in uh, diy and baking i am interested in psychology so i can directly select psychology and real time filtering can happen what if mm -hmm. you are asking me what does the user want so basically we don't know what the user uh, wants unless we have some data on him or her right mm -hmm. so after we gather this kind of data after we activate n number of users and we have that what is the most number of course in what area does the user live and uh, what is the age and all these things once we have this data then we can say ki okay user wants this kind of course because you know let's suppose uh, i am not interested in diy but if i find that uh, the teacher that is giving the course is let's say national record holder right and 100 plus people are also watching so i might give it a try and i might end up liking it so bitclass is not only a platform for uh, you know pursuing hobbies that i know but kind of uh, exploring uh, the hobbies that i don't know that i like right i i didn't know that i like uh, meditation and all but i actually paid for the course and it it was my second day today that uh, i had my course so you know it it happens we can't, we don't know what the user want in what mood he is in okay. plus we are also giving the you know the game uh, wherein it can be lead to more personalized options yeah. yeah so that is also there okay okay all right also going back to your uh, the same screen you said that it was overwhelming first and the redesign one is less overwhelming can you point out how because okay. you okay. added more data you added more filters so what's your intention here all right so let's suppose uh, that uh, you know uh, currently looking at the left side so currently uh, if you keep on reading this get creative with macram start your handmade home decor next yeah. screen tarot card reading next screen and so there is n number of things that is happening what if we kind of highlight the we kind of attract the user atten users attention on the thumbnail itself start your handmade decor right personality analysis right make delicious cookies in 6 minutes 60 minutes i don't want to like i don't want to even read the title because i know i want to make delicious cookies in 60 minutes the user wants to do that and the user can directly enter the course the next step that the user will do is then read the title right which is kind of just a structured way to present it but catching the user attend user's attention and letting him know uh, ab what the course is about leads to a better experience and a lower decision fatigue so uh, and plus the tags uh, you asked so one time i opened the app and it had like 14 live classes so scrolling the app 14 times and hoping to find the perfect course at the end of it rather than that, that if there are you know three or four tags it leads to easier decision making which kind of you know user knows user belongs to a tier 1 tier 2 city user knows how to select this tags how to kind of filter this out what do i want at a specific period of time so you know just kind of giving uh, the authority in the user's hand so which is why also tags make sense sometimes okay all right thanks thanks amay i don't think i have anything to add here okay okay all right cool thanks thank you so much amay and i think we're down to the last team forum and reshika i think sorry if i pronounced your name wrong if you could just raise your hands tanya will be adding you yeah reshika
We have reached con stage and we're just waiting for forum. Is all right uh i hope uh, we are audible and uh, i think we'll get started sure. yeah uh, forum can you please share the screen yes hi utsav i know <laughs> you have already watched like five decks and there must be a lot of dilemma in your head no, no, not really. I watched it. Uh, I went over the decks yesterday too. I'm yeah. just waiting to hear it from you guys. What was the thought behind it? <laughs> All right. It multiple times. All right. Have you attended a class? Which one did you attend? Uh, yeah, I did um, register for a free class and I did attend it, but I was actually late. Uh, so I was just I was just there for like five minutes and the class ended. So okay. that was the drop. Yeah. Uh, I attended any some of the art class. I don't remember the exact. Uh, yeah, art class. It was. All right. All right. Uh, so, uh, hello everyone. Uh, let's dive into our, um, our deck. So, by the way, Forum and I are colleagues. Uh, we work at Fontodo Labs, and uh, I work as a learning experience manager, and Forum works as a product de designer. And Fontodo Labs is an e-learning platform, um, ed tech platform, you can call. It. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, like all of us have already described, BitClass is an e-learning platform that provides various courses and it's to its user in, in different categories like hobby, passion, career, personal development, etc. Uh, but what makes BitClass uh, special is that um, can we go ahead, photo? Yeah. So th the three important features that makes BitClass special is number one, there is access to a uh, live teacher and the teachers are experts from the industry. Uh, number two, um, there is try and buy policy uh, in terms of uh, the, the user has the autonomy to try various number of classes and then actually uh, uh, pay for the class they really like. And then finally, there is no subscription, which is something uh, really nice because majority of the platforms have subscriptions and users really don't like uh, you know subscribing for various platforms so that is a very good part of bit plus uh, yeah moving on um, we decided to go ahead with the second problem statement which was about the referral program for free class students and uh, full course bias and we'll uh, just suggest some of the solution that we decided uh, we went with a very simple uh, process, inspiration, ideation, and implementation. In the inspiration, with its very simple user research, competitor analysis, in the ideation, we first decided what kind of referral program we wanted to design, then uh, did the ideation or different solution based on that, defined user journey, and then prioritization, and finally implemented by having some UX uh, elements designed for the uh, solution and defined success metrics. Yeah, moving on. Um, so here are the simple user personas that we decided to go ahead with. Uh, number one is Sunanda. She's 35 years old, homemaker, and she also wants to take a lot of hobby courses whenever she's free. Uh, one of the major pain points she has is that uh, she wants to invite her friends to uh, the class so that she can have better social learning experience. On the other hand, Vikram is a 28 years old working professional. Uh, he uh, wants to do some side hustle on the weekends and uh, his major pain point is that he's not uh, motivated enough to uh, uh, invite people to join bit class and finally aditi who's 22 year old college graduate and she wants to pursue public speaking as a career her pain point is also that she wants to invite people to uh, join her friends to join bit class but um, so that she can have better learning experience yeah so here are some of the competitors, direct and indirect competitors of BitClass based on our research. Only some of them that we have listed. So Front Row and Air Black are direct competitors and indirect competitors are UDM and Coursera. Uh, moving on, uh, on the screen you can see is the Front Row referral program, some sample referral program from the competitor. As you can see on the screen, Front Row follows very simple three-step uh, referral program. That is, uh, the user can share their certificate once they have completed the course and then users can actually support the people to join uh, Front uh, Row. And finally, they can win premium uh, membership uh, by sharing it to various uh, people. 
so now let's move on to what is the current uh, referral program of bitclass uh, here as you can see on the screen bitclass already has a very simple referral program in place where the user just has to click on invite a friend then it is directed to the uh, message screen where they can share personalize the message and share the link and then they can also earn uh, various uh, in app coins like bitcash which is bitcash is equal to one bitcash is equal to one uh, rupee so they can earn by, by even when the referrer uh, converts into a bit class user so this is our existing referral program so according to us here are the uh, some of the issues with the current uh, referral program number one as you can see uh, when i clicked on the invite a friend and when i send the message to uh, one of my friends neither the referee that is me nor the referral got any reward uh, and as you can see on the screen the bit cash uh, gets i get as a user i get 250 bit, bit cash only if the referral got converted and that and there are no intermediate rewards for me because I also sent a message uh, to, to people. I should have got uh, some sort of rewards, intermediate rewards as well. So we believe that there is lack of user motivation and lack of uh, fun and engagement in the current referral program. So that's the reason we decided to go ahead with uh, uh, what kind of referral program we wanted to design. Number one, we wanted to design a program that is tied to growth and revenue uh, to increase retention and finally to increase user engagement. Uh, that's the reason he, we decided three simple goals for our referral program. Number one, it should be and should be usable by all the user personas. Uh, it should be fun and engaging. And finally, it should be very easy to use. All right. Uh, so let's dive into the solution. As all of us know, generally, there are two types of incentives uh, available for the referral program, two types of referrals. One is incentivized and one is non-incentivized. So in the incentivized referral, the user generally gets money, discount coupons, five reward. Minutes. Five minutes are over already? Yeah. OK, OK. We'll try to skim fast. All right. Uh, so let's dive into the first solution. Uh, we got the inspiration from Google Pay, a very famous stamp collection campaign that Google Pay had run. Taking inspiration from them, as the name suggests, the users will have to collect various stamps to earn a final reward, which is unlock a free course of their choice. The rewards can be, uh, the stamps can be like books, hearts, hats, bulbs, etc. Let's understand the flow of it uh, quickly. So as you can see on the screen, um, in the free in the stamp collection, if the if uh, the user is a free free class user, then uh, he can collect stamps in three different stages. Number one, completing a free class by referring it to a friend, or and whenever the referee converts into a bit class user, um, and for the for the full course buyer, there are five time five instances where a user can collect these stamps. One is buying a course, referring to it to a friend, completing a course, you know, converting referrer converts, etc. So this process continues until they reach certain winning criteria, and then they unlock a uh, free course of their choice. Let's dive into the second solution quickly, which is spin the wheel, as the name suggests. So users get various opportunities to spin the wheel and earn rewards like coins, coupons, etc. Uh, to understand it in uh, detail, the user flow is like this. Forum can be good, yeah. Uh, so to uh, how does spin the wheel work is if I, if I'm a free class user, uh, once I complete a free class, I get a chance to spin, and uh, this process continues. And if I'm out of spin, then um, I can refer a friend and earn more spins, and this process will continue until I get more rewards. Uh, and if I'm a full course buyer, I will uh, buy a course, get more chances, and then spin uh, win a reward. If I'm out of spin, then I can perform the last four actions and then earn more spins and win more rewards. Yeah. And then finally, uh, the third solution is very simple, which we wanted to keep it to into non incentivized major uh, category. So the here, for the badges collection, the main criteria is focusing on the conversion. So number of conversions a user gets for the uh, bit class. Let's understand that in more detail in the next slide. Yeah, so like you can see on the screen, if I'm a user uh, and if I've referred it to a friend and if my referee, if the referred friend converts into a bit class user, I'm going to earn a badge. So on the left side, you can see types of badges that a user will earn. If the if the, if he has got one conversion, then he's, he gets the badge of helper. If three, then cheerleader, if 10, rockstar, etc. And finally, if it is a, if the user gets a 25 conversions for the bit class, then we can call him, give him a superstar of bit class um, badge and also reward him for such commendable work and give by giving certain offers or uh, gift vouchers, etc. So these were our three simple solutions. Uh, we uh, decided to go ahead with the RISE framework and um, chose stamp collection as our uh, major solution. Let's understand stamp collection in, in more detail now. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the stamp collection criteria, the purpose of stamp collection is majorly to unlock a free course by collecting various stamps. The winning criteria could be uh, if the... 
yeah last 30 seconds will need so um, to win the users will have to collect seven bulbs five hearts 20 books etc so this is the uh, general um, or a sample winning criteria that we have set you can also see when the users on different stages when the user is going to collect the rewards one thing that we want to highlight here is that um, it will be good if we have random uh, display or random collection of um, stamps so that user is more intrigued and the excitement and surprise factor is uh, kept intact for the user yeah uh, now forum is going to take you through the user uh, ux designs yeah so here we uh, added with some of the ux uh, wireframes of the uh, sol uh, of our solution of stamp collection uh, so uh, when when any user install the uh, uh, app for the first time uh, first time then he will uh, uh, re he will get the reward of uh, any any stamp so uh, in the, this way uh, user will introduce for the first time of the referral program and uh, that uh, that stamp is reflected on that uh, current uh, current bit cash coin and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the information about the all the stamps that uh, uh, they will get uh, there next is when uh, when any uh, Okay, am, I, am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, the next step is when uh, when uh, any user refer uh, his or her friend, then uh, then also he will collect one uh, surprise stamp, and that will be reflected on that uh, app. The third one is when whenever uh, whenever any users uh, register for a free class. Then, then also he will, uh, he or he or she will get a uh, reward, and uh, and after that uh, that task completion, he will uh, get the uh, that screen that will uh, tell him or her that uh, she will collect uh, more stamps by referring to the friends. Yeah, uh, to oh, quickly to. Yeah, thank you, Forum. So quickly, because our goal was to um, have a refer program tied to growth, revenue, retention, and engagement. That's the reason we picked these uh, success metrics. Uh, but can we go to the next slide quickly, Forum? Yes. Yeah. Uh, to quickly to summarize, the current referral program of Bitlas uh, has uh, uh, they, neither the referee nor the referer gets any reward. Uh, referee referer gets a reward only when the referer converts, this, that, which leads to lack of user motivation and engagement. Uh, whereas in our solution, we try to uh, do gamification of the referral program, and both the referee and the referer are getting rewards uh, timely, that which leads to user motivation and better engagement on the platform. Yeah. So that's about our uh, solution. Thanks, Thank thanks. you so much. Thanks, Reshita. Thank Thanks. you. It was uh, very crisp. So yeah, thank you so much for taking out time for building this. Uh, I don't have any specific questions um, related to what you presented. But yeah, tell me, tell me the, tell me about the last app that you referred to a friend explicitly while going on the app, not word of mouth, and why. Um, so I, it was coincident that I took front row coats right before I enrolled to the uh, bit last year down. Mm -hmm. And I referred that to uh, some of my friends because the user experience was very good and the content was very good. Yeah. Front row was that app. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I don't have more questions. Thank you. Utsab. We had a great experience um, doing this. Thanks, Rishika. See you in class. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Forum. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Forum. Thank you, Rishika. Utsavai, that's those are all the finalists. We're done? OK. Yeah, we're done. It was super refreshing. I mean, uh, end of the day, I think nothing better than this that I would have asked for. So it was lovely. And thank you so much again for taking out time for building all of these presentations and everything. It was uh, very, very useful, very thoughtful. Uh, so now you can take the time to reflect or uh, go about evaluate. Process, evaluate the finalists. Surely, surely. And, surely. And when is it? Mean, I'll need a little bit of time. When, when, when do I have to close all of this? I mean, we'll all be waiting for you on this call while you will be. <laughs> or all right, all right, all right. So I'll need a I'll need a few minutes of time. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take your time. Take your time. Uh, everyone will stay on call, and you are anticipating your results. Yeah. Uh, All right. You can go on mute. You can switch off video. Yeah, just can... give me a couple of minutes. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh, All right. Meanwhile, um, thank you to all the uh, finalists once again, and I hope you each of you get the results that <laughs> you are expecting. Maybe not all of you, but I still hope you guys had a good time and a good journey. And uh, for those who did, and for those who are watching, I just want to rem remind you guys that uh, I have sent the link for next month's uh, Teardown, June edition of Teardown, and we have collaborated with Simple which is a fintech company and um, I hope to see most of you there as participants uh, and yeah thank you so okay. much yeah so we have a lot of people here and I believe most of these uh, did participate in our previous uh, and even this tear down as well so I'm really curious to know what what is your like approach to a case study like when you start so like how do you approach the problem if anyone would like to Uh, no one wants to talk about how they approach problems. Okay. I think Pearl has responded. Yeah. Okay, so the problem statement will be out in okay here. Okay, uh, use a research play store, previous product instead for similar products. Yeah, so uh, I actually like that you refer to previous product folks that so that they give you a really good insight to you know to how to approach problems if it's your first or you know your iterating on to uh, on a, how to perform better in these product you done. So like uh, referring to the past. Final is this are a great way to start. So that's a good answer. Okay. So uh, I wanted to know like, uh, what's the max number of product tear downs you're attending? Is there anyone who's attended like, uh, participated in like three tear downs till yet? Wow. Okay. Super nice. Okay. So I'm a pearl. Oh, wow. So many you've participated in five. That's really nice. We hope you all participate in the simple pro product here on as well. So it's going to be a really interesting one that I can uh, tell you for sure. Okay. Nice share. That's really nice. We are, we are having so many first year rounds. Actually, Reshika, uh, we would love if you could uh, build a refer strategy for product tear downs as well. We want to really expand our reach for this event as well. Great. I think somebody had asked if this session is going to be recorded on chat. I, I took that answer on chat as well. But uh, I would just like to remind everyone that this session, along with previous sessions of Teardowns, previous editions have been uploaded on YouTube. Uh, I will just send the link once I get it. Uh, I'll just fetch the link and send it to you. I, you must have got it in some of your uh, emails if you have participated. If you haven't, I will send the link in the chat box. And you can check out any of the previous editions of the Teardowns for inspiration for any future one that you will participate in. And we have Utsav back. 
Yes. So, where do we start? How do we? How is there? Is there a protocol to it? Is there a process to it? No, you can just go about. Uh, I I think one one thing to start off with would be to see the to if you could tell us the criteria on which you judge the participants on, so that they will also know. Uh, sure. I think what worked and what didn't. Uh, I think the breadth of content was amazing. I mean, people touched upon problems and then they suggested solutions around product and uh, not just within the product domain, but even beyond that. You know what? You should be doing this. You should be doing that, and that's great. Uh, but I think the biggest criteria here is uh, people have thought about that one specific problem and proposed a solution which covers that problem or tackles that problem in depth, instead of uh, having a longer laundry list of solving it through multiple ways. Uh, probably picking up one or two solutions and then really hitting the nail on the head. I think that was that was the biggest criteria, right? Um, more than anything else. So where do we start? Do we start with the first position first? No, that would be too anti. No, no, third. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> there is a process to it, and we will stick to it. So, all right. The third position goes to: Is there a drum roll? Is there a virtual drum roll? About no, we don't have a drum roll. Forum and uh, Reshuka. Oh, congrats, Forum. Congrats, congrats. Forum and Reshuka. <laughs> Wish we had a soundtrack for an applause. Absolutely, we need it. You have yeah, that, need that thing, and you don't have this. Right. Excellent. So, so could you tell us more about what you liked in uh, Reshu and Forum's presentation? Again, uh, sticking to that original criteria, uh, just one simple problem statement and what is that one solution you have that you have built properly? You have thought about it, you have thought about the depth, you have thought about the challenges that you might encounter, and then you have presented it. I think that was, that was it. That's pretty much the theme for all of the three Super best presentations that we thought. Of. All right. Second one is Amir. So congratulations, Amir. And finally, the winner is Suman. So Suman takes the full position. Congratulations, Suman. Uh, we really liked your presentation and your thought behind it. Uh, really, it, it kind of almost felt like a story. That was great. Right, from the beginning to the problem to the solution to the costs and benefits and everything. So I think that was the common unifying theme uh, or unifying criteria of evaluating all the submissions. And that's absolutely lovely to see all of these people putting in so much effort. So thanks again, guys. And many, many, many congratulations to the winners. Congratulations to all the winners, all the four of you. Um, thank you so much, Utsav. Thank you so much to the participants and the finalists. And um, yeah, <laughs> we are done. And any for to the winners, uh, for the communication regarding uh, whether it's prize money or interviews will be communicated to you later. Until later. All right, thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. This was thank awesome. you so much. When is the next session? I'm coming for the next session as an audience. <laughs> yeah, we know. we will inform you. The next session will be at the end of the next month, next month as well. Got it. It's a monthly thing. All right. It's a monthly thing. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thanks for hosting this. Absolutely. Thank wonderful. you so much, Utsa. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hope you all have a good rest of the week. All right. Good night, guys.